In St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 15, he offers a passage of scripture which is considered by scholars to be among the earliest forms of early Christian creeds. He says, I received from the Lord what I handed on to you, that which was of first importance, that Christ Jesus died for our sins according to the scripture, that he was buried, that he rose on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, that he appeared unto Cephas, then to the twelve, then to more than five hundred brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still alive. says the central paschal mystery of this Jesus is that he is the Messiah. Who is this Messiah? According to the Old Testament in Isaiah chapter 9 we read, For unto us a child is born, for unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and he shall be called the Wonderful Counselor, the Almighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. God incarnate, that he was buried, and that he rose the third day, in accordance and fulfillment with all the prophecies that were handed on before. And so we see the mystery of the payment of death. As Paul will later remind us, death, where is your victory? Death, where is your sting? And this is something that shocked both the Greek world and the early Hebraic world when the early church was preaching resurrection. The early pagans who encountered the gospel had a problem with the resurrection of the body. Like many of us Westerners, they think of resurrection as the soul making its way higher and higher to God, this body merely as a shell. This, of course, shocked them to suggest that this matter is good. Yet this is the departure point for divine revelation. This is what Genesis says in separation from all other world systems, that in the beginning God created both the heavens and the earth, the body and the soul, and that this comprises a complete human person. It shocked the early Hebraic or Jewish world. They believed in a resurrection, but corporately, of all men and women at the end of time, when they would bodily rise and stand before in advance of all of humanity again. And so when Paul is giving us this revelation, we see not only great hope, we see through the eyes of Peter and of John who kneel outside the empty tomb and see the burial garments, the shroud. We see through the eyes of the weeping Mary Magdalene as she kneels and tries to reach out to her Lord and to her God, the vision that all that seems to be of entropy, all that seems to fall apart, this side of heaven will be restored. You know, there is a very ancient tradition, and although it is not directly contained in scripture, there are scriptures that point indirectly to it, and it has largely been believed by most of the Protestant, Orthodox, and Catholic worlds. As a devout Roman Catholic, we speak of it as the harrowing of hell, but it's a misleading term. It's the idea that on the Holy Saturday, between Easter and Good Friday, Christ descended into what is called Abraham's bosom or the limbus of the fathers, where he met the souls of all who were waiting his resurrection, waiting for the gates of Eden, the gates of heaven to reopen. There he meets with Adam, who is able to look on his God face to face again. There he meets with Abel, now Jesus has become the perfect sacrifice. Here he meets with Abraham, and now Abraham could see his descendant, God incarnate, come to rescue the world. Here he meets with David. David's able to offer true homage. Job reaches out and embraces the God who he refused to deny despite suffering. But last of all, he comes to Joseph. And Joseph's first question, according to uh, one of 
these interpretations is to Jesus. Tell me, how is your mother? Tell me, how is your mother? We cannot begin to comprehend how much Christ's death and resurrection has not only fulfilled passages we read in holy writing, but how his life fulfills the expectations of those who have come before, those who are, and God willing, those who will come after us. And when we think of what that resurrection means, it means that what occurred in the garden, when Adam took forth his hand to reach for the forbidden fruit, the introduction of entropy, the introduction of death, that that has been reversed at the cross, the down payment is visible through the empty tomb, but like Jesus, we with oil my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We hope that you have a blessing and a safe Easter, and we look forward to seeing you once more. And my prayer is if you have not yet encountered the Christ whom we speak of, that you would take some time today to open up to Luke 24. John chapter 20, or 1 Corinthians 15, from which we've quoted today, and to see in the living Word of God, the inerrant, holy Word of God, an image of a Lord and God who loves you enough to die for you and to give his life a ransom for many, so that we could rise with him. May God richly bless you all, and we look forward to hearing you.